Welcome again to another Curator's Chat. I'm Jason French, Curator of Collections here at the Beringer Crawford Museum. Today, of course, we're in our library, and I have two amazing historians and wonderful people here with me. We wanted to talk a little bit about Appalachian folk art, and in particular today we're going to talk about kind of woodcraft, whittling and building things um, from wood as an Appalachian, and how it uh, ties into folk art. Here I have Mike Maloney here to my right, who has been involved involved with the Appalachian uh, um, the Urban Appalachian uh, Council here in the Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky area for many years. He's he's got a long resume of a amazing work that he does within the community. And Joseph Andrews, who is a NKU grad student in public history, and he and I have been working together a lot with uh, folk art and Appalachian crafts over the last uh, year or so. Hi, I'm Joe Andrews. I'm a graduate student at Northern Kentucky University, and today, as part of our continuing series, uh, Expressions of Home, uh, discussing Appalachian folk art, I wanted to touch on uh, woodworking specifically. Oftentimes when I think about Appalachian folk art, I think about my grandfather sitting on the porch uh, with a piece of wood and his pocket knife, whittling it out. Um, not really a lot of rhyme or reason to whittling. Just kind of goes back to that concept of busy work with your hands. Um, but every now and again, these pieces of wood, they start to kind of take on a form, take on an expression. And so we've got some really neat pieces here um, that were loaned to us by Mike Maloney. Uh, from the Urban Appalachian Community Coalition out of Cincinnati. All right, the, uh, the first thing that I'd like to introduce is, is a log cabin. And um, I saw this cabin at the Appalachian Festival in Cincinnati, which when we are not in the pandemic uh, occurs every Mother's Day weekend. Um, I saw this and I commissioned one to be made just for me and uh, this folk artist knew children so he made the roof to come off children like um, my granddaughter used to put the pig in this room and then put the roof back on it's not just a folk art object it's also a toy there's the purest approach which would never allow this to be electrified but this craftsman knew children, as I said, so he put a little light in here. So the light shines through the cabin. And uh, so that he expressed his personality that way. Anyhow, I lived in a cabin like this the winter of 1947. It was vacant. We needed to move somewhere, and we just moved in without even asking the owner. He, by, he probably lived in Dayton or somewhere by then. So we stayed there the winter of 47. Um, and this is called a dog, dog trot cabin. And part of the purpose of the dog trot, aside from the fact that the dogs get to trot back and forth <laughs> through there, is that the women especially, and sometimes the men would help too, would make their cabbage and, uh, and string their beans and do other food preservation tasks in this sheltered area. And it was close to the kitchen and also to the, also to the sleeping quarters. This one has two chimneys. Sometimes the chimney was placed in between and open for fire on both sides. So um, so anyhow, that's the cabin, and I disagree a, a little bit about um, no rhyme or reason because this this woodcarver chose his piece of uh, wood. He wanted a striped cow, so he made a striped cow by selecting a piece of wood that has had some some pattern to it. So there are other there are ways that the the craftsperson can express his or her personality. My step grand nephew made this one. This thing about making a, a really long dog, um, you know, that is an expression of his personality. He also made 
this one. And if you look, you can't really see the pattern of carving in this one, but you can see the little cuts in this one more. And his choice of wood, you know, I don't think he was very ambitious about that. He picked the softest wood he could find, and he carved it, and it's very plain. But it also is an authentic representation of what the dogs in his life looked like. So that, too, is an expression. Um, this carver, all of these are from Letcher County, Kentucky, by the way. This is from Appalachian, Ohio. But the... Uh, this carver from Letcher County, you can't see the marks of the knife. It's very smooth. And also, it's all very intricate, which again is an expression of that artist and his approach to his art. So again, one thing that I really enjoy about these pieces is, is again, they're very much, especially this piece right here, it's a, it, it's a literal expression of your home, your, <laughs> your childhood home. Um, and it's just really interesting when you, when you actually go and you look at the details in these pieces and, and the stories that kind of are being told through all the little cuts and carves and, and, and different things, the, the smallest details. Hope you've enjoyed this little chat with Mike and Joe as they discuss Appalachian folk art. Stay tuned. We'll actually have another chat with them discussing Appalachian quilting. Look forward to that. If you like our videos, like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We always enjoy our comments. We'll uh, see you on our next Curator's Chat.